Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the news desk. Rich Hagen sitting alongside the director of global organized play, Ellen Bejo. Ellen, as always, thanks for taking the time. Uh, welcome to Vancouver, not too far away. We did this last, I think, in Nice, mm -hmm. uh, in France, which was a transatlantic trip, but Seattle, just down the road, really. It's almost home, which is nice. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, now we have so much uh, to get through. And I, th I think what stands out to me from all that we're going to talk about is there is something kind of for everyone, whatever level of competitive magic you're interested in, we've got something for you. Why don't we start, we've rolled the dice, why don't we start in the world of the PPTQs and the RPTQs? We have some dates, right? Absolutely. Just okay. like we would like to give a um, you know, complete overview of the 2016 season. So starting with the primary PTQ is like um, um, seems logical. All right, so here we are. These are the next five seasons of PPTQs and the dates for the RPTQs. There's a lot to unpack here. Um, I noticed first things first, it looks like once we get to the start of 2016, the PPTQs are going to be pretty much continuous, Ellen. Uh, it's absolutely correct. So we are trying to take a slightly different approach with the primary PTQs and the regional PTQs in the way they are being scheduled. Our goal is to shorten the time between the very first primary PTQ for, you know, that qualifies for a given Pro Tour and the Pro Tour. So in order to accomplish that, we have to go for a break. You know, just that's what you can see on the screen. You know, uh, that's why we stop at the end of November and we resume in January. Right. But then afterwards, as soon as we enter you know, that uh, season for the third Pro Tour of 2016, it's just like it's going to be an ongoing, just like a rollout of uh, primary PTQs. We've season that go from you know, 12 to 15 weeks, mm -hmm. primary PTQs, a break regional PTQs, and then the Pro Tour. Now, you see on the right-hand side of your screen, the regional PTQs, they all have two weekends uh, to them. Now, we've seen that before, where, for example, Europe would be one mm -hmm. weekend, and maybe Latin America would be another. Is, is this the same thing, um, or are you doing something different? We are also doing something different here. Okay. Um, because we want to make it as easy as possible for players who manage to qualify for the regional PTQ to attend their regional PTQ. So what we're going to do is actually just like to divide, you know, as um, uh, equally as possible, the regional PTQ among these two weekends. So that if you are in a given region and you cannot go to the first weekend because, you know, just like there is life, <laughs> just mm -hmm. like, uh, you still have the opportunity to attend a regional PTQ on the second weekend. Fantastic. Bit of extra flexibility mm -hmm. uh, for the RPTQ qualifiers. All right, more news about RPTQs coming up next. Let's take a look um, and tell you about a couple of very exciting things, Ellen. Um, so these additional uh, um, the features that we are presenting here are coming directly actually from feedback that we heard from the players because it's really important for us to listen to that feedback and make sure that we are finding some solutions to improve our programs. The very, very first thing is like the fact that we are adding some La Chance qualifiers before each uh, regional PTQs mm -hmm. because the players have been telling us that um, you know as much as they enjoy the regional PTQ, they miss the fact about not being able to go with their friends. So like this, you know, we can still you know, just like uh, go up in a car uh, with their friends and their friends still have a chance to make it a regional PTQ by participating in that uh, region, the, uh, sorry, last chance qualifier. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second piece of news on that, coming to Magic Online, how will that work? Uh, so just like very similarly to the uh, regular uh, regional PTQ, we will have one online regional PTQ on the first weekend and a second one on the second weekend. And the reason why we are implementing uh, this is just like to make it easier for players who are living in remote area uh, in the sense where you know, they are not necessarily a, a, a regional PTQ uh, which is very accessible so like this they have the opportunity to attend that regional PTQ from there. Fantastic all right that's the world of PPTQs and RPTQs but we know you love all sorts of different <laughs> kinds of competitive magic the next thing we want to talk about is the independent tournament circuit and uh, what are the news here? Um, so we have seen over the years that uh, players really enjoy playing in larger events. You know, they are just like on a regular basis, they can play at that local store and now and then they want to participate which some, in something which is like larger in terms mm -hmm. of experience. And um, so we have been looking at ways to make sure that these larger tournaments would be better integrated in our system. So first thing that we are doing is revisit the Planeswalker Plum Point Multiplier because it's important mm -hmm. for the players who are chasing these points to get their buys. And that's why you, you can see just like, you know, uh, the multipliers for the qualifiers and the finals. Okay. That's the first thing. And 
I'm excited about the next one as well, you know, just to make sure that we are connecting better all the different programs to each other. We are going to work with the organizers you know, in charge of this series mm -hmm. in order to just like, uh, award some uh, uh, Pro Tour invites Fantastic. to the finals. Uh, and in terms of, uh, it says select series finals, I, I guess uh, obviously full implementation next year, but we're talking about things like maybe Star City Games uh, Open Series, TCG Player Series, mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing. That's the kind of level we're talking Absolutely. about, right? Absolutely exactly the type of events that we are mm -hmm. you know, uh, talking about here. And now, just like, you know, in the coming months, we are going to work with the organizers that were saying, so more news to be just like, uh, announced in the, the, the next months. Okay, uh, later in lunch, we're going to be talking about the World Magic Cup captains, um, but once you know your captain, who's going to make up the rest of the team? For that, we need World Magic Cup qualifiers. Let's take a look at the dates for those, because we have those uh, coming up on your screen in just a moment. Here we are, uh, June the 18th, July the 9th, and then September the 17th. That's for the 2016 uh, World uh, Magic Cup qualifiers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just like, and as you can see, just like a you know, mix in between standard and modern format, mm -hmm. just also to respond to just like the uh, players, just like our uh, uh, feedback. All right. So uh, that's uh, World Magic Cup qualifiers 2016. Where I want to go next uh, is a world that I'm certainly very closely connected with around yeah. Europe, the world of the Grand Prix. Um, so we've seen huge growth uh, in the Grand Prix scene over the last few years. So the first question is for 2016, how many Grand Prix are we going to have around the world? So next year, we are planning to run a total of 48 Grand Prix worldwide. Okay. Now, is that... Is that the same as this year? It's actually slightly less than this year. All right, what's the thinking? Oh, well, it's, it's actually to, to, to um, um, uh, you know, just like, uh, go back to what you were just saying. The program has been growing tremendously over the past years. And we realized this year that we might have been growing a little bit too fast in the sense where we have seen some conflicts in some, some of the dates mm -hmm. where the events that we have been delivering, some of them were not exactly meeting our expectations. So we are considering 2016 as a year of stabilization. Um, you know, while still keeping a really good uh, regional spread, mm -hmm. uh, just like to see uh, how we can improve our scheduling and just like you know, uh, innovate a few things on, about the way we're approaching that schedule with the goal but to go back to growth in 2017. Right, you, you mentioned a regional spread, so that's sort of 26 in the Americas, in the Americas uh, as a whole, correct. and then 12 round Europe, yes. and then how many Asia Pacific? 10, 10 in Asia Pacific. Okay, so that's 26, 38, and there's our 48. Okay, mm -hmm. so 26, 12, uh, and 10. There's lots of good news. You say it's a consolidation year, if you like, but my yeah. word, there is growth in a lot of ways. Why don't we take a look at some more of the Grand Prix news coming out uh, here? So, Ellen, take it away. Well, the first thing is about the price payout. Uh, we are both simplifying it and you know, updating it. So now we have only just like two different types of price payout. Today we have way more based always on attendance. But the exciting thing here is that the baseline for every single Grand Prix will be like a payout of $50,000. Mm -hmm. And then for the Grand Prix, which are above 3,000 players, will go up to $75,000. Great stuff. Um, something which is not mentioned on that slide is the fact that we're also going to revisit the breakdown of the price payout to make sure that actually it's a little bit more top heavy okay so top heavy meaning it, it's awarded most of the money goes to most of the most successful players a so kind of as a reward for winning something so huge absolutely that's exactly the full process behind this change mm -hmm. okay now we also have uh, on there we saw that you get invitation and you get the travel award Mm -hmm. That's super exciting. Yeah, it's uh, because today we are in the situation where the top eight gets their flights, but people get their invite based on points don't. So we say let's simplify, just like let's make sure that everybody who's getting an invite to the Pro Tour via a Grand Prix gets their flights as well. That's super exciting. And finally, 18 match points, so that's six wins and three losses or more at the end of day one, advanced to day two. So that's one win less than we've had for many, many years. Mm -hmm. What's the True. thinking behind that change? Well, you know, we realize that players, when they go to a Grand Prix, the first thing that they want to do is to play as much magic as possible. Mm -hmm. So by introducing this change, we are giving the opportunity to more players to uh, you know, continue their experience, have the chance to you know, just like play against the best players on day two. And so we are thinking, you no, know, that's going to be exciting for many players. For sure. All right, now we have the full Grand Prix schedule. So why don't we start taking a look yep. at that uh, as we begin our year. Oakland's the very first of 2016. Uh, then you've got a triple.
triple header Vancouver, Nagoya, Mexico City. There's a triple modern weekend uh, through March, Detroit, Bologna and Melbourne. Double standard the 19th and 20th. Uh, Ellen, already there's a pattern here uh, yes. in terms of formatting. <laughs> what, what, so this is obviously no accident. What mm -hmm. are you thinking? Well, it's one of the things that you know we are we are looking at for next year. Make sure that when we have a multiple Grand Prix on a given weekend, they are all the same format. It's just like to make sure that we have a, a theme. You know, like this is the theme about everybody is playing a GP this weekend is playing standard, or this weekend is modern. We we are excited to see that just to see also the conversation from one GP to another. It's a little bit inspired from what we have seen during the Modern Masters weekend. There was an energy that you know that was the first time that we are looking at that. Say, hmm. How can we do that just like also, you know, on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see the next uh, part of our year um, as we head towards April and May. And again, you'll see that pattern. The, the weekends, they're all the same oh, format. Um, so uh, Minneapolis, uh, Manchester and uh, Chinese Taipei you see down there in standard. Legacy, Columbus and Prague. Let's move on again. Uh, take you into the second half uh, of the year. Team Limited in uh, Sao Paulo, that, that's fun. I want to ask you, uh, Ellen, about Limited. Uh, there's always a tension for pro players the weekend before a pro tour mm -hmm. uh, whether to go uh, to uh, a Grand Prix or not, whether they should be busy testing. Um, have you done anything uh, in that regard? Well, as you can see from uh, the schedule, right before every mm. single pro tour, there is a weekend of uh, GPs. Mm -hmm. Just like so that, you know, uh, the pros who want to do that have this bad opportunity. Right, but it's also, uh, in terms of format, am I right that you've all also gone with just limited Absolutely. the weekend before <laughs> the pro tour? So the pros don't have to decide whether to unveil their decks mm -hmm. or start showing their test decks. They get to play limited. That's nice. So uh, all there. Uh, why don't we see the last part of the 2016 schedule uh, coming up on screen for you. We'll see what else uh, we have coming your way at Atlanta, Georgia with Seal Deck along with London and Sydney. That's three great uh, venues to choose from. You see Warsaw there. Uh, Santiago has another GP at the back end of October. That's standard. And I noticed that you've got Rotterdam, the Netherlands team limited. Uh -huh. yep. hmm. mm -hmm. That's going to be interesting. All right. Uh, so that's the Grand Prix year. Don't forget you'll be able to uh, see all of this back on YouTube. And also uh, there is an article going live on the website. You'll be able to digest all this information uh, at your leisure. Um, but how about, let's see, World Championship, World Magic Cup. Do we know where they're going to be? Let's find out. Take a look on screen if we can. There we go. So uh, the date to be determined, the formats to be determined for the World Championship, but it will once again, Helen, uh, be at PAX Prime, which is where we're going to be in a month's time. Absolutely, and the reason why the date is to be determined is because PAX didn't announce yet the, the, the date of the show for next year. Right, but that 2016 World Magic Cup, if you look at the dates, 18th to the 20th, mm -hmm. that appears to me to be exactly one week after 18 Grand Prix in Rotterdam, yeah. the Netherlands. So we are also trying something here. Right. Just like to make sure that the teams participating in the World Magic Cup you know, have the chance to maybe come over a war, uh, no, week earlier I... and play in the GP. That yeah. must, no, I'm sure it's going to be a very, very fun GP. That Grand Prix <laughs> yeah. could be just fantastic because on the face of it, if you can possibly get there, why on earth wouldn't you? So we will expect mm -hmm. lots of Latin American countries. We would expect people from all over Europe to be there, of course. So it's almost going to be the... The, the preview for the World Magic Cup is going to be a phenomenal event. Uh, that So um, let's see, we've done uh, PPTQs and RPTQs. We've talked about last chances and Magic Online RPTQs, independent series awarding slots. We've talked about World Magic Cup qualifiers. We've talked about 48 Grand Prix. We've talked about six and three making day two. We've talked about more money. We've talked about invitation. <laughs> we've so talked right. about 48 GPs. <laughs> we've talked about the World Championship, the World Magic Cup. Surely we're done. Sure, you probably want to know about the Pro Tour, though. You're going to give us the Pro Tours for mm -hmm. next year as yep. well? Absolutely. Do you want to see where we're going next year? Go on, then. <laughs> the Pro Tours for 2016 are in Atlanta, Georgia, Madrid in Spain, Sydney in Australia, and we end up with Honolulu in Hawaii. Alain, we don't need to see any more. We just need to leave that on the screen. Yep. For Ellen Bergeau, the director of Global Organized Play, this is the Organized Play announcements here at Pro Tour Magic Origins.